Hey everyone, Brandon from Hybrid Fitness here. I'm gonna give you four tips on how to avoid the mistakes I made when I first started lifting. When you first start working out, it can be a very confusing, very intimidating process. Right? You walk into a gym for the first time and there's machines all over the place, there's free weights over here, there's people all about. A lot of times we get asked, how do you know where to start? How do you do it safely? And how do you do it without looking like it's your first time, right? Nobody wants to take out like a sore thumb when they first start. I look back a lot of times when I first started and there's a lot of mistakes I made. I can't help but just kind of chuckle at them and shake my head at myself. Sometimes I don't know what was going through my head that made me think that anything I was doing was either smart, safe, or effective. Through those mistakes, though, I learned a lot of tips on how to avoid those. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna give you four tips for mistakes that I made personally in the past when I first started working out to help you potentially avoid those mistakes yourself. All right, guys, tip number one, pretty simple. We just wanna try to forget about what we think we know about working out, right? So there's a lot of people out there in gyms giving advice that probably shouldn't be giving advice. They probably fall in the same trap that a lot of people fall in, right? They hear things over and over again and it kind of becomes a concrete truth in their mind. You know, for me, for personal experience, I remember when I first started training, I had a bunch of people telling me on barbell back squats and barbell deadlifts that you should always be keeping your head up towards the ceiling, right? And the idea behind it was you keep your head up and naturally bring your chest up and keeps everything else in line throughout the movement. And we've come to discover that's not true at all, right? We want to, when every time we do one of those movements, we want to keep that spine, the back, the head, everything in one line as we go through. That's just one example, right? We, I can do an entire video on bad tips like that that I got when I first started. But over the years, I found not many of those were actually true, right? A lot of them were false information, bad information, and stuff that it took me a very long time to kind of erase from my brain and kind of almost start new, start over. Kind of like the first time you open up a journal or something, right? It's all blank pages. Kind of think of our working out minds as that, right? We want to start completely blank and start off with good info, good tips. That's the first step to getting a successful lifting or working out life going. All right guys, tip number two. We wanna learn the basic movements first and progress those slowly over time. We don't want to come into a gym, and we see this a lot. They'll set up for a barbell back squat on the first day. The first day they're trying to throw as much weight onto a barbell back squat or a barbell deadlift, barbell bench press, whatever the movement may be. Right, they're starting off with the advanced movements and they're even sometimes starting off with really heavy weights in those movements. We want to try to make sure that we have the basic movement patterns down first. So instead of starting off with a barbell back squat, let's tone it back a little bit, get rid of the barbell. Let's see if we can even move right first to support that barbell back squat. Right, those are things that if you can learn that early on, so you don't have to retrain your body after you've been doing something for weeks, months, potentially even years, that is such a huge advantage going forward to already know that you have the basic movement patterns down. You know, it's like when you first start swimming, right? Nobody just jumps into a pool and knows how to swim, right? There's always, you know, floaties on your arms or little devices, float pads around to always help you stay afloat until you learn how to properly do it. Same idea of what we want to do when we first start working out. Learn the basics, help those keep you afloat until you're ready for those big movements. All right, guys, we got tip number three. And for me personally, this is probably the one that took me the longest to learn, and it's to simply forget about your ego, right? Don't be an ego lifter. We've probably, a lot of you have probably heard that term, ego lifter. I was the biggest ego lifter you probably ever see, right? Every time I stepped into the gym, all I focused on was getting more weight onto the bar, pushing myself as hard as I possibly could, trying to impress people around me. I never really gave my body a chance to rest properly, right? When you constantly push your body like that, push more weight, more weight, what's happening is your body has a hard time keeping up, right? The body's a fascinating machine, right? I was just watching something the other day about these astronauts going into space and how the first few days, they didn't know what to do, right? They felt horrible, they were nauseous, because their bodies weren't used to being in zero gravity, being completely weightless. But after the first few days, they felt better. They, their body adapted to everything. It works the same way in the gym. Every stress that you push your body under, it's gonna find a way to make it work, to make the best out of that situation. But there comes a time when your body just simply can't keep up. When you're constantly pushing yourself, your body is asking for rest. And if you don't give it that rest, you're gonna start to run into issues. Me personally, I went through a phase for a while where I started lifting and I got great results pushing myself as hard as I could until I wasn't anymore. And I plateaued and I couldn't get progress. Even though I was working harder and harder every day, I wasn't seeing the results. And what was happening was I wasn't giving my body any chance to rest. And then I was introduced to the term deloads. 
And then I'm not saying you have to take a deload, but this is just one example of something that can work. You know, every four, five, six weeks or so, I give myself a little bit of an easier week. I don't necessarily take it off and just do nothing or do something so easy that I'm not giving any type of stress on my body. But we just wanna take that intensity of our normal workouts and just lower it just a little bit so that way our body kinda of can catch it up to us. And that's something that if you can learn that again early on, you're just setting yourself up for such great potential success down the road. All right guys, fourth and final tip today is gonna to be to ask for advice, or don't be afraid to ask for advice. You know, there's a lot of people in gyms that do have a lot of great knowledge. They've been doing it for a long time. They've studied a little bit, and they can give you some great advice. You know, you gotta sort through, make sure you're getting the advice from the right people. But a lot of people in gyms don't mind if you, you know, simply go over and ask them to help you with setup, or help you spot, or if they just have a simple question about your form or something. A lot of people won't mind if you take the time and ask for the help. You know, in fact, a lot of people in gyms that I know would rather somebody come and ask them for help than to look over and see someone hurt on the floor. All right, we don't want to see people come into a gym that never show back up. We w everybody wants to see everybody else getting better. Or at least we should. So for the final tip, guys, make sure that you're asking for advice and you're taking the good advice you're getting, sifting through the bad stuff, try to throw that away, but keep that good stuff and just continue to get better. So guys, there are a lot of things that I wish I could go back and do differently when I first started working out. And these four pieces of advice here, these four tips, these are I think the biggest ones that for myself and probably for a lot of people out there, these are the tips here that are gonna give you the best starting point when you're working out, right? You don't have to be starting out. If you've been doing, if you've been working out for months, years even, there's always good times to go back and retract the basics. Right, go over things that we think we already know. Sometimes you know, bad habits develop. So make sure that we're always looking back to simple things like this, simple tips, checking ourselves, making sure we're doing the right things. And if you guys found this video helpful, informative, then hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, check out more of our channel. And as always, small steps, big results. Keep at it.